Hi everyone, this is Group 11 presenting our dataset German credit and I'm group leader Jing Yuan with my group mates uh, Huai Yue, Ming Hao and Ze Yu. Now Huai Yue will explain our objectives and approach. Our presentation contains four parts <laughs> and I start with problem statement. Our group will present a risk management solution based on German credit dataset, which is the financial dataset, including personal information and also financial uh, status. Our goal is to first evaluate and identify which client may come at high credit risk. And then we will estimate credit limit for a particular client. And also we will conduct customer segmentation analysis and draw risk controlled strategy based on the different groups of our clients. And here's our data preparation. So here's our data set description. We have 10 variables. And initially we have four numerical variables and from data description, we know the job needs to be converted to a factor uh, variable. And after converting, we have three numerical variables and seven factors. And since we have a huge uh, size of missing values, so uh, we need to take uh, further methodologies to deal with these missing values and the uh, outliers. Well, according to our data source, um, the missing reason is either unknown or um, the clients don't have such an account. Uh, we have a serious missing value issues, especially for checking accounts. We have 394 missing out of 1,000 instances. And we have four methods to deal with missing data, uh, including filling randomly by majority or by the proportion of each class, and also KN imputer. Um, we will validate four methods in our modeling part and choose one of the methods to deal with missing data. And for our EDA report, we temporarily label the missing value as unknown to better understand our data set. For our layers, we have three numeric variables, which is um, age, duration, um, and also credit amount. For age and duration, we will remove the outliers. Um, and for credit amount, we will use 90% uh, visualization, which is to replace the, the outliers below 50 percentile and also above the 95 percentile. Next is our, here's our uh, union variant analyst. We plot histogram for each individual variables. And here's the histogram for risks and the, the histogram for the purpose. And uh, we can see a purpose has unbalanced values and uh, we group sex, job, and housing for our client information. And that's the, uh, we show the histogram as a group and then we group the checking and saving account for the uh, uh, client account information. And here's the three histogram for the our numerical variables, age, credit amount, and duration are rescued and they are not normally distributed. Next is our bivariate analyze. And we utilize the correlation matrix and box plot and stack box plot. And first is our correlation matrix for the numerical uh, variables and duration and the credit amount are highly correlated in the same direction. And next we have the box plot for the numerical and the categorical variables. The first one is the age versus other categorical variables. Clients who have who are older tend to have the characteristics with the highly skilled job and the free housing status with a rich label for checking account. And uh, we have the credit amount versus other uh, categorical variables and clients who get higher uh, credit amount tend to have the characteristics with highly skilled job, free housing status and with a purpose for the vacation others. And we have the duration for the versus other categorical variables and clients who have higher duration tend to have the characteristic that are highly skilled and free housing status. Saving account is considered with a moderate uh, label and risk level is bad. And we use the stacked box plot for the categorical variables. So we visualize the risk versus other categorical variables. From the plot, we can see each categorical variable's risk level varies to some degree. So in a conclusion, we have three numerical variables and seven factors for our EDA stage, and we're not going to drop any variables. And here's our statistical analysis part. We have conducted four statistical analysis 
and we will focus on hypothesis testing and also multiple testing. For hypothesis testing, we focus on the difference of average measures in two groups divided by risk level, as risk level is one of our outcomes, so we, uh, we focus on this part. In three t-tests, the results show that there is a significant difference on the average measures in good and bad risk. And for multiple testing, we focus on the difference of average credit amount in five groups of people. Credit amount is one of our outcomes, and the test showed that there is a significant difference um, between the five groups of people. So we utilize the chi-square test for the categorical variables versus other categorical variables. So we try to see the significance among uh, risks and other categorical variables. So we set our null hypothesis as uh, risks, uh, average risks in each group is the same. And the alternative hypothesis is the average risks varies by groups. As a result, we have to accept the null hypothesis for job and the purpose, reject the null hypothesis for housing, saving account, and the checking account. However, from the bivariate analyze, the risks versus other categorical plot shows that purpose varies to some degree and the job varies a little bit. So we are not going to drop any variables at this stage. And next, uh, with all the data preparations, now next, uh, comes to our models for our analyze. And the first model we use is the PCA for the feature selection. So we can get the variables from PCA to do the linear regression to predict our credit limit. And we use the classification for identify risk level. And finally, we use the clustering to do the client segment segmentation. We want to utilize the result of PCA for dimension reduction for our data sets and try to use the result for prediction of credit amount. So creating each uh, single dummy variable for categorical variables with multiple classes is redundant. And with the result of KMO less than 0.5, we have to group a few conditions into one dummy variable to deal with these categorical variables. And after grouping, we got a KMO greater than 0.5 showing the need of doing the PC analyze. And from the script plot, the elbow occurs at the fourth component. So we choose four components for PC analyze and the four components together explain 65% of the variance. And this is the plot for the PCA uh, selection result. So the first uh, component is credit usage purpose. The second group is the client banking status. And third component is client housing status. And fourth one is the client comprehensive information. We will use the first three principal components variables to build a linear regression model. They include their variables uh, that have little collinearity with the variables included in the PCE components. Next comes to our linear regression. Given the fact that most of the data variables are categorical, we decided to use the dummy variables from PCA for our linear regression model in order to reduce dimension. A VF result shows that there is no multicollinearity issue for our model. This model has an R-square value of 0 0.4017, which means this model explains approximately 40% of the variation in the response variable around its mean. It is not high for a linear model. We believe it was due to that most of the variables were uh, categorical. Thus, we had to create dummy variables for them, which only contain one and zero. This would cause the R-square value to be lower. Note that some of the variables have a high p-value, like a sex dummy with a 0.222, or a chicken little to moderate with a 0.908. Using 0.05 as our alpha, we conclude that those variables are not statistically uh, significant. Uh, this is the confidence interval, which means that there's a 95% probability that the true linear regression line of the population falls within the confidence interval of the regression line. Again, some of them have a wide range, like chicken range goes from negative 1200 to negative 33. We believe it is due to uh, zero categorical type, the same reason as the uh, for the previous lower square value of the linear regression model. Uh, next to Huai Yue, and she will talk about the uh, uh, classification. Our goal in classification is to identify the risk level of clients based on clients' personas and also bank account information. Um, we have two models for classification. First of all, I validate the four methods of dealing with missing data. 
and it turned out that randomly filling this data would be the best method in both models. And for feature selection, according to PC and also statistical analysis, job is not considered as feature, and also credit amount is not considered in the classification part. First of all, the decision tree results. This model achieves 73.7% accuracy rate. And after grouping category of variables according to PC analysis, there's a 2% increase on the accuracy rate. And the top important features are duration, age, and also saving account information. This is the result for logistic regression model. And the logistic regression classifier achieves 74.1% accuracy rate. And I used cross-validation to tune the parameters, and the model results are shown in the picture. And here's our customary part. Basically, we want to determine that which case optimal for our K-means model. Due to the plotting within sum of squares, we can see that when K equals to 4, the amount of within sum of squares didn't change much. So we can say that K equals 4 is our optimal K for K-means model. Next, so we have four clusters with k equals four, we run the k-mix model and we will give each cluster different labels. Well, for cluster one, we determine them as socially like and priority customers because they have high job skills, they have healthy financial conditions, and they have a good cash flow. So they have a lower credit risk. For those customers, we need to offer them more credit because they have a good credit record and they should have high return products as they have a good cash flow. For cluster two, we define them as high quality customer. Although their job skill is relatively low, but their financial condition is good and they have a stable cash flow. We assume that they have a rich family to support their finance. As a result, they also have a lower credit risk. So for those customers, fixed income products will be suitable. For cluster three, we define them as white collars and long-term customers with growing potential because white collars may have a big fortune in the future. Um, their job skill is relatively high and they definitely have decent salary and cash flow. So for those customers, as they need to accumulate their wealth in the future, diversified products to balance their risk and return should be great. For the last cluster, we define them as sub-customer because they have a high credit risk. So we should be cautious when offering their credit. And that is the conclusion of our clustering part. Also, we built a demo to show our data solution. First of all, we will input the bank account information and also client personas to build classification and classify the risk level of this kind. And also we will um, use the risk level as an input of our regression model and also predict the credit limit for a particular client, cluster the client into four of the cluster we mentioned before, and to provide a, a risk control strategy solution for the particular client. The demonstration is currently built on my local environment, on my PC, and here you go. For example, we have a female client and she is highly skilled and has moderate checking and saving account. She's 42 and um, have 21 for long duration. We can choose one of the classification models. For example, we can choose decision tree and to get our business metrics. We can see that this client has good risk level and also we can predict a credit limit for the client. Uh, we can cluster, uh, get her cluster, which is growing client. So we would do the uh, recommendation of risk control management we mentioned before in the clustering part. And that is our data solution for credit risk control. And thank you for listening.